welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I want to talk about budgeting for a convention. Oh my goodness. Is it, is it true? Is it real? Are we finally able to go back to cons here in Canada? Now that COVID is kind of dying down, people are getting vaccinated, things are opening up more, and cons are starting up again, I figured it would be a good time to talk about budgeting for going to a convention, especially if you plan to go to an out-of-town convention. I've gone to quite a few out-of-town conventions uh, in the past 10 years. I've been to Anime Boston, I've been to Katsicon, I've been to Anime North a few times, I've been to YetiCon. There's just you know, quite a few. I haven't been to any that required me to fly out. Oh wait, there was that one con in Glasgow that I went to, but I mean, I didn't go for the con. I went for vacation and I just happened to have found a con in Glasgow. And I happened to have a caution with me because I had planned to do a location shoot at a castle anyways. So there was that. So traveling to an out of town convention can be very exciting. However, it is also very expensive, especially if you decide to go to one of the bigger cons in one of the bigger cities. But there are ways that you can reduce your costs, especially if you are a broke university or college student. Number one on the list, let's talk about hotels. Normally hotels open up their doors to the convention at a reduced rate. so. When you are planning to go to a convention, make sure you keep an eye out for the hotel bookings. You can typically get a hotel room for a cheaper rate if you go with the actual uh, event bookings that they open up. Try not to book your room before the actual event bookings open, because if you do, then that basically closes up the hotel and less space is made available and it kind of ruins the whole cheaper hotels for everyone kind of deal. So really make sure you wait for your event to announce their hotel bookings and then book then. Now I know that there are some cons that will sell out in less than 10 minutes. Katsucon, I am looking at you, but needless to say that you should keep an eye out for it and you should really try to book with the actual event bookings for the hotel. You also want to make sure ahead of time before you book hotels that you know exactly who you will be staying with. When you enter in your information to the hotel, they're often going to ask you the names and contact information for all of your roommates. Make sure you know all of that stuff. Make sure that you also have a credit card that doesn't expire by the time the event happens. A lot of people are often tempted to crowd their hotel rooms, especially because crowding a hotel room means that the cost is overall cheaper. However, you do have to take into consideration your own comfort. I know that a hotel room is really just a place for you to stay and sleep the night, but if you are rooming with a bunch of cosplayers, chances are you're also going to be using it to prepare and get ready before you go out to the event. And trust me, we cosplayers take up a lot of space and we tend to use all of the mirrors. In hotel rooms, that's not very many. <laughs> if we're lucky, we have a hallway mirror and one in the bathroom, if we're lucky. I know it's tempting to crowd your hotel rooms, but it might not be worth it for your own comfort at the end. Now, of course, maybe adding one extra person might not make a difference as long as you know they're okay with sleeping on the floor because oftentimes hotel rooms are just two queen beds so you would only be able to sleep four at a time anyways in the bed. Uh, and oftentimes they're not big enough that you can have a cot be brought in. So if you really, really did want to cut down on costs, you can always just open it up to somebody to sleep on the floor. I've done that in the past, and we've always offered for the person to sleep on the floor to pay a lower rate since they wouldn't be in the bed anyways. Next, let's talk about transportation. So transportation involves a couple of things. It can be buses, 
it can be um, traveling by car, it can be traveling by train, or even traveling by plane. Now, obviously, if you are going to a local convention, traveling by bus or by the local metro or train system will probably be the cheapest alternative for you. You can also travel via car in your local area, but then you have to worry about parking. If your venue has underground parking or attached parking, then that's no problem. But if you are in an area that doesn't have a lot of parking, that can be challenging to figure out. When you are traveling to an out of town convention, you really want to take into consideration where the event is compared to where the public transportation stations are. So if you're taking the train, you want to make sure that you are able to get from the train station with all of your luggage all the way to ho your hotel. And of course, I mean, it's feasible to do that, but if you want to reduce your costs, you really don't want to have to rely on taxis for this. It's preferred if you are able to walk from your train station to your event slash hotel room. Now, if you are traveling via car to your out of town convention, you wanna make sure that hotel prices include parking. If the hotel doesn't offer parking, make sure you find a parking garage that's relatively affordable that's nearby the hotel and the event. I always try to limit it to like a 10 minute walk from the hotel. If you can't find any parking around there, then I suggest finding some other way to get to your event. Finally, we have the plane option. Obviously, this is the most expensive option. This is definitely not budget friendly. However, if you are from the East Coast and you want to go to a con on the West Coast, I don't expect that you are going to be taking your car and driving all the way across the continent because that would take forever. And let's be honest, time is also money. So most likely you're gonna take a plane. Now you can cheap out and get a cheaper flight and not pay for luggage. And I mean, for you that might be fine, but if you are a cosplayer, you're probably gonna wanna bring luggage with you. In which case then you have to consider the storage of your luggage and you also wanna consider how to safely wrap all of your precious, delicate costume pieces. It would be quite the shame if you got to the con and you find out that your luggage has been tossed aside and your staff that was so nicely prepared in your luggage has broken off or has chipped some paint or something. That would be really unfortunate. So not only do you have to consider the cost of the actual plane ticket, you also need to consider the cost of having to repair things or having to deal with lost luggage because lost luggage is a pretty common occurrence with planes. I have been very lucky that I've never had to deal with any of that, but I have heard horror stories. Next up is food. Food can easily add up. It's so easy to overspend on food by just going to restaurants and eating out and drinking and all that fun stuff. If you really wanted to limit your budget for food, try to bring your own food. Try to do groceries beforehand and make sure you pick up things for breakfast, things for lunch that are easily snackable. Bring a bunch of snacks like granola bars and protein bars and that kind of stuff. And even bring a cooler. Back when I was a broke student, I used to actually prepare things like pizza. I would make pizza in great big batches the night before. I would pack it into Tupperwares and line it with wax paper, and I would shove it in a cooler. And we would make sure to get ice to put in the cooler to keep the pizza cooled and cold throughout the entire day. And then we would pop that pizza into the microwave for lunch or whatever, and we actually saved a lot. I also brought things like cheeses and cold cuts and breads and stuff to make little sandwiches. I often would bring croissants or uh, other kinds of pastries and muffins for breakfast. I would also bring a lot of fruit. We often don't hydrate enough during the con, so bringing fruit can help hydrate that because they're often full of water. Now, when it comes to buying your ticket, you want to try to make sure that you get the early bird ticket if that's available. The early bird ticket tends to be a lower cost than compared to buying at the door. You can save like a good 
20, $30, depending on the event, maybe even more sometimes, just by paying it a couple months early. And while 20 and 30 bucks might not sound like much, that's a meal. That is a meal. You could, you could take that money that you would have otherwise spent and spend it on a nice meal with your friends for one out of the con. Next up, we have photo shoots. If you're a cosplayer like me, you probably like to have photo shoots at your convention. You want to make sure that you consider your budget for photo shoots. What is your amount of money that you are willing to spend on a photo shoot or on multiple photo shoots? And make sure that you try to find photographers that would fit within your range. Obviously, we all have different budgets and sometimes you might not be able to even afford the cheaper photographers because you really are strapped for cash. In that case, try to bring a friend and use your phone camera. Phone cameras are pretty great nowadays and you can take some pretty great photos with just your friend and your phone. You don't have to have a photographer to necessarily do your own photo shoots. Obviously, it's much more fun to be able to do that, but you can always just have your friend take photos for you. And if you're really not comfortable with editing your own photos, you can always pay a photographer after the event to edit a couple of photos. You can choose the ones that you like the best and then be like, hey, would you be willing to edit this for me? At that point, the photographer can say, yeah, sure, why not? Or they can say no. There's no harm in asking. The worst is they can say no. Last but not least, you want to budget for your shopping. Make sure that you have a separate amount of cash set aside just for the merch hall and the artist alley. Make sure that that is separate from all the other money that you have. And if that money happens to be a very small amount, well then try to wait until the Sunday. Sunday is often when vendors and artists give deals because they want to sell off their merch so that they don't have to bring it all back with them. So Sundays are often the deal days. Now, of course, you, the item that you might have wanted might not be available anymore. So that is the risk. However, when you're running on a budget, there's not much that you can do anyways. You can also take a look at some events that might be selling secondhand things. I know that Otakuthon in Montreal, we have a secondhand booth where they sell merch, costumes, wigs, manga, all kinds of things secondhand that are just, you know, people like you and me can submit my, our stuff and then we give a price point and if someone buys it, then we get a cut of that money and then a cut of it goes to the actual event. So keep an eye out for secondhand booths as well. So that is all my advice for budgeting for a convention. I hope this video was helpful and if you have any more tips or tricks, please leave them down in the comments for everyone else to see. Thank you for listening and I will see you all next time. Bye!